This is Dyneema, a futuristic fiber considered to be one of the strongest in the world. It's amazingly strong. Incredibly light. Highly windproof. It's so light. 15 times stronger than steel, yet incredibly light, flexible, waterproof, and about as thin as a sheet of paper. Its uses range from tethering satellites in outer space, to G-force resistant garments used by NASA, to the daredevil flying wingsuits, and has revolutionized the way the backpacking industry thinks about lightweight and durable gear. Dyneema, Why has it become Dyneema, so popular? Dyneema. And what are its strengths and limitations? And what is the future of this kind of technology and material in the outdoors? Let's unravel Dyneema. In addition to hiking videos, Greenbelly also makes ready-to-eat backpacking meals. Greenbelly meals are 650 calorie meal bars loaded with nutrition like protein, carbs, fat, sodium, and fiber. Greenbelly meals have been called Rice Krispie Treats on steroids and come in five flavors using all natural ingredients. Check us out at greenbelly.com. Okay, back to the video. Dyneema is popular due to its strength to weight ratio, meaning it's very strong, specifically its tensile strength, yet still light enough to float on water. It's also known to be puncture resistant and stretch resistant. This fiber has been used to make the most premium lightweight backpacking gear material, particularly for tents and backpack where its weight, strength, and water resistant properties are highly coveted. So what is Dyneema exactly? Its more technical name is Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene, or UHMWPE fiber, and is actually a fiber that is used to make fabric. Described as a long chain of polyethylene molecules that are cured and then stretched. Let's dummy this down a bit. Thank you. In the outdoor world, there are two types of fabrics made from Dyneema. Dyneema Composite Fabric, or DCF, or Dyneema Composite Hybrid, or DCH. These are called composite fabrics because they are multi-layer materials. Think of them like a grilled cheese sandwich. DCF is made of a grid of Dyneema fiber, the cheese, sandwiched between two sheets of polyester plastic laminate called mylar, the bread, which is then put under heat and pressure into a non-woven laminate, the grill press. DCF is mostly used in tents, tarps, and stuff sacks. DCH is the same as DCF. However, DCH has an additional fabric layered on top, the butter, to protect it from abrasion. This additional layer makes DCH more commonly used in backpacks where abrasions are more common. Okay, so where did this fancy futuristic fiber come from? In 1968, Dr. Albert Pennings accidentally created the fiber while conducting experiments in polymer chemistry for a company called DSM. He happened to be stirring a beaker and noticed these wispy threads forming on the stirring rod. When he tried to stretch them with his hands, he found that he couldn't break them. At the time, DSM had no interest in selling fiber or fabric. It took years of testing, research, and convincing before DSM decided to invest and commercialize it in the late 1970s. DSM was developing literally 1,001 applications. One of their first decisions was to focus on three applications, body armor, yarn lines for sailing, and mooring systems for container ships and oil rigs. It was used to raise the Costa Concordia in Italy. And Luke Aikens jumped from a plane without a parachute and landed in a net made with Dyneema. In 1992, they developed this unique sail claw. This new sail was so light that it could be carried to the boat by four people rather than the usual 12. The America Cubed was carried to victory by sails made with the fiber in the 1992 America's Cup sailing race. The press, not knowing what to call it, gave it the name Cuban Fiber, sort of named after the America Cube team. Eventually, Cubic Tech Corporation was formed in 2003 to explore non-sailing applications for the material. Word spread about the new material, and some innovative entrepreneurs started wondering about its potential use in backpacking gear. Yeah, the first to use it in backpacking gear would have been Mountain Laurel Designs, Z Packs, uh, Rod Moak from Six Moon Designs introduced a tent called the Refuge X in 2008, and then Mike St. Pierre founded Hyperlight Mountain Gear in 2010. He had been working with the fabrics at least a year or two before that as well. These brands are still around today and are considered pioneers in the ultra light backpacking gear movement. I first heard of Dyneema probably in roughly 2008. I was looking for a better way of backpacking, really, and came across in a chat room somewhere, people talking about Cuban fiber. Very few people actually knew about it. We basically 
sent products to anyone that was willing to carry them. That year, we were fortunate to find several people that were on the Pacific Crest Trail. And actually, those two guys were the very first guys to finish that trail that year. We had confidence in the materials at that point. There's some, particularly at this point with some hindsight, some entertaining forums on Backpacking Light website where they're talking about, this is horrible, it'll never last in the backpacking world, it's not a good choice. In 2009, our owner, uh, Joe Valesco, he used a Cuban fiber tent um, on this through hike of the CDT. Companies like Hyperlite Mountain Gear and Z-Packs bet big on Cuban fiber and developed their entire product lines around the new high-tech material. And Cuban fiber was a hit. Compared to other alternatives, it could reduce a gear's item weight by ounces, if not whole pounds, and completely repelled water to keep gear dry. Backpackers started buying and the brands grew. Eventually, an entire cottage industry developed around gear using the new magic fabric. And in 2015, Cubic Tech was purchased and rebranded as Dyneema, which is what it is currently known as. In the outdoor world, it's still mainly used for tents, backpacks, and stuff sacks. More applications continue to be tested, like Hyperlite Mountain Gear's rain show. We've tried just about every application across all the products we sell. We even, a long time ago, messed around looking at a hammock. So this incredibly strong and lightweight material revolutionized a lot of outdoor gear. Is this it though? The material to rain over all other backpacking materials? One ring to rule them all. Well, it's not perfect. There certainly are some drawbacks. Most notably, it is pricey. Like potentially two or three times as much as a similar gear item. The fiber is made in the USA and the manufacturing of the Dyneema composite fabrics is in the USA. And the process for it is very manual, so there's high labor costs. And while Dyneema itself is a cut-resistant fiber, the laminate layer that makes DCF repel water and retain its shape is not as strong and can deteriorate over time. Some of these reasons might have contributed to bigger brands like Osprey, REI, and Gregory passing on the material. I think a lot of that has to do with their economic models and, and pricing models. When you take a costly fabric like that, it really makes the MSRP of the product much more than what a lot of these cottage brands were, were doing at the time. On that note, let's go over some of the other tent and backpack materials being used. For backpacking tents, other than Dyneema composite fabrics, brands commonly use Sil Nylon and Sil Poly. These have been popular since the 70s. However, they've improved a lot since then. Some popular brands that use Sil Nylon are Nemo, Big Agnes, and MSR. To compare apples to apples, let's look at Tarp Tent, a brand that offers the same tent model in both materials. The Sil Nylon version of the Pro Trail weighs 24 ounces and costs $239. While the DCF version is stronger and weighs a little bit less at 17 and a half ounces, but costs more than twice as much at $529. For backpacking packs, other than Dyneema Composite Hybrid, brands have been using materials like Robic, X-Pack, and now recently Ultra. Ultra is a laminate fabric that is two-thirds UHMPWE fibers, which is unbranded Dyneema. According to their test, Ultra is 20% lighter and four times more abrasion resistance than standalone Dyneema Composite fabrics. Those have ridiculous durability metrics, so they're going to look really, really good on paper. Yeah, it's also a little bit cheaper. It's not manufactured in the U.S. It's like if you can save 25% of the weight somehow and still make it as durable, like that's what we're going to go to because it's all about how light can we get our stuff while still achieving the function. The competition for the best backpacking material has heated up. All of these fabrics seem to have their place though, depending on the needs and the wants of the brands and customers using them. I don't think that either one of them is taking the other one over or beating it. It's just there are different gaps to fill. And as we go along, I think that you'll see other innovations in the same vein. Dyneema is still being used by lightweight adventurers across the globe. Long distance through hikes like the Pacific Crest Trail to climbing Mount Everest to jumping out of planes, with more uses still being discovered. We are continuing to work on product improvements. So I think expect to see something in the next year or two. A big thanks to Dyneema, Z-Pax, Hyperlite Mountain Gear, ULA Equipment, and Ripstop by the Roll for their help making this video. If you liked this video and want to see more hiking videos like it, we really appreciate a like and for you to subscribe to our channel. Safe hiking.